Hello, and thank you for checking out my recorded presentation today uh, for the second International Ocean Data Conference. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I'm from the University of Washington. I'm also the Vice Chair for Data and Information for the GOOS Observations Coordination Group. And I'd like to talk today about the project I've been working on for, for several years called the Open Access to GTS and how it's integrating into WIST 2 as a pilot project. I would like to thank my co-authors, Kevin Kern and Bill Smith uh, from the National Data Buoy Center in, in uh, Mississippi in the US and David Berry, who is working as the, at the WMO. For those that may not know, the GTS is the global telecommunication system. It's basically the way that data is exchanged in near real time throughout the uh, the global operational forecast system, forecasts, uh, weather forecasts, safety of life at sea forecasts, etc. So it's a critical piece of the global infrastructure for operational forecasting. Just a little background, um, the GOOS Observations Coordination Group is responsible for the coordination of the uh, global ocean networks and, and it's part of the joint WMO IOC efforts. One area that the OCG looks to coordinate is data in real time. And so uh, several years ago, we were approached with a problem that there, there was known to be data that was being collected, but that this data was not making it to the operational um, models in the forecast in, in near real time. So how could we improve that? And from that uh, question is where the OpenGTS uh, was developed. Uh, and it really was developed to try to improve data exchange in near real time, increase the number of observations that are available to the operational forecast in the hopes that this would um, in improve those forecasts. Just for those that aren't aware, uh, I'll quickly talk about the, what the current uh, data exchange workflow is for the OpenGTS. So we'll have some platforms that are out there measuring, perhaps they're sail drones, perhaps they're commercial ships. Those, uh, those platforms make their observations and they send them uh, to the currently to NOAA's Pacific Marine Environmental Lab. We either grab them off FS, SFDP or someone pushes them to us. We then take that data and load it into an ERDAP service. And the great thing about the ERDAP service is that it supports many different formats. So this makes it much easier to work with platform and data providers. We are very flexible in the, in the format that we can, uh, we can accept. Once that data is available in the ERDAP service, then it is then harvested by NOAA's National Data Buoy Center and encoded into the proper buffer template and then exchanged and put onto the GTS. However, the GTS is a relatively closed system. It's not something that everyone has easy access to. And so the great part about the uh, open GTS workflow is that this data is also made available through public ERDAP endpoints. That means the general public, the research community, whoever else may be interested in, the, in this data but cannot access the GTS can go to this ERDAP service and grab the data. It's a very important part of the OpenGTS, and it's also an important part of the WIS 2.0. Here are just a couple of examples of platforms that we've been working with. This is actually AIS data. This is MET data that's collected by AIS systems on these ships, and this is an incredibly rich source of potential data to include in these operational forecasts, as not much of this data is actually making its way through the operational systems. So how does OpenGTS fit into the WIS 2.0? Well, there's a few things. First, to mention that the WIS 2.0 is really an evolution of the WMO information system. It's really an effort to improve the way data is exchanged globally in near real time. I mentioned that it was kind of a closed system. This is an effort to make it more open and available to more users using more modern technologies such as the internet rather than the old GTS infrastructure. So the OpenGTS is involved in a few, day, a few ways. Uh, we have been officially designated as a WIS 2.0 pilot to improve this data exchange. Uh, as a demonstrator project, we are involved with uh, DWD in Germany to test exchange of sail drone and ship data via the WIS 2.0 protocols. This was a very successful test, so we're moving forward to a pilot phase. Secondly, as part of the WMO test team on NetCDF, we are developing data profiles that describe exchange of data on the WIS-2 using NetCDF data format. So this is really important because one of the difficulties of the GTS is the binary format that is really the standard by which data is exchanged. NetCDF is a much easier, there's more richer tools to, to deal with and use NetCDF data, and, and this should help uh, open up, uh, up avenues of using this data. So it's important to note the OpenGTS, we're really kind of straddling the line here. We're, we're, uniquely positioned to ease exchange for the current WIS, the current GTS, because that's important. That's not going anywhere. The operational processes still depend on this, but we're also looking to the future with WIS 2.0. 
So what might that look like? Here's what an example workflow might look like with the OpenGTS services and with 2.0. It's very similar to how we grab the data before we support many for formats from the platform and the data providers. We put that data into an ERT app. But the big, big difference is what we're integrating is this publish subscribe broker like MQTT takes the place of the GTS. And so what happens is people that are interested in the data that we are putting into the ERT app will subscribe to this message from this data. And when the data is published to the PubSub broker, then they will be notified that is data is there to retrieve. So this allows users to subscribe to the data that they want. And this means that the users might actually receive a buffer file because maybe that's what they want. A lot of people still use that net CDF file, uh, which will maybe be easier for others that are not operational to use, but it also may be a service URL just to access the data. And then we can actually stop with the downloads, you know, and, and then that sort of thing. So there's a lot of options here, which, which still are being worked out how the best way to exchange that data. But the nice thing, again, is it's still in the ERDAP service. It's still available to the general public who may not even be able to deal with the pub sub uh, uh, complication. So that's it. I want to thank you again for uh, checking out my talk, and I look forward to talking to you in person in Paris. Thank you.